In today's video, we are going to be giving you some of our tips and experiences on board Iona. We have sailed on board Iona three times. Mm -hmm. The first time we sailed on board her was one of the sea occasions mm -hmm. when there were only... It's less than half capacity, yeah. wasn't it? So not very many passengers on board at all. Then we have also sailed to the Norwegian Fjords and to, on a Northern Europe cruise. For those of you that don't know us, I'm Izzy and this is Laura. We're experienced p and cruisers and um, as we said, we've been on Iona now three times. So if you were to ask us what one of what our favourite cruise ship is, it would be really difficult for us to answer that question. But Iona is, is definitely up there for us. She's a beautiful ship and there's, there's lots to offer on board. We just love the decor, we love how mm -hmm. modern it is. And it's not too glitzy and in your face. Yeah. It's quite calming. Yeah. And the other thing is just that we've been on other ships with similar capacities to Iona. And Iona just doesn't feel as busy as them. Because she sails, fjords mm -hmm. and northern Europe, there's definitely enough places to sit inside. Yeah. Which can be a struggle on other ships when the weather's not good. It can be hard to find a seat inside. Mm -hmm. We originally were supposed to sail on board Iona in October 2020 for my 40th birthday. <laughs> and um, we, at the time, managed to get such a good deal. Yeah. And we've got a suite booked. Yes. Never quite got over the fact that obviously the cruise didn't happen yeah. and never got to stay in the suite. We even rebooked it and that cruise got cancelled for COVID too. So. One day, I will say it this week. <laughs> but one of the, not really positives, but something okay that came out of COVID was that we had a decent amount of future cruise credit. We had, on p &O, we had the October Iona cruise booked and we also had a summer cruise, Baltic cruise booked. Um, obviously, both of those got cancelled and the cruise credit at the time was 125%. So we were then able to use that to to rebook three times on Iona and we're convinced we did another cruise somewhere as well from that future cruise credit so we did get some some more cruises for our money and um, it was just a shame we didn't get to go in the suite because of the future cruise credit we've only ever actually sailed inside balcony cabins on board Iona um, we love the cabins mm -hmm. we love the settee because it just gives you that little bit more space However, it is quite narrow. Yeah, there's not much gap between like the end of the bed and the wall. And it depends where your bed is. If your bed is closer to the balcony, it's a lot easier to get to the wardrobe mm -hmm. than it is if your bed is closer to the wardrobe. Yeah, and because we have our bed set as twin rather than a double, you don't get much of a gap between the beds. It's just a really narrow bit. Almost end up with each other's quilt during the night. <laughs> the best thing about it is... There's no shower curtain. Uh -huh. Yeah, the glass shower screen is just great. Um, we have seen inside inside cabins because we've sailed with other family members mm -hmm. who are in, inside, and there is lots of space yeah. inside those cabins, and we would not hesitate to book an inside cabin on board. Differently to the other ships in the fleet, Iona and Arvia are solely freedom dining, which we were a bit skeptical about at first. So we are normally ones for booking second sitting. We like the routine of it we like having a table where we can get to know people that we're sharing with and we just really enjoy the experience of that but we didn't actually find it an issue on board Iona I think one of those reasons is because there's so many different venues that you can go and eat one of our favorite additions was the keys because it gives you somewhere different skills than the buffet mm -hmm. of a lunch time or a breakfast I mean, you can go to the main dining room as well, but sometimes you just want to grab something quick. Yeah. And it gives you that opportunity to do that. Laura's got a particular favourite. Yeah, I do like the southern fried chicken in there on Iona, which you can't get on Arvia, which is very sad. But it is just a really nice addition. It does get very busy on a sea day or a quieter port day. It does get very busy, but if you time it right, there's plenty of seating in there. You might have to queue, but you will get a nice, fresh, hot meal. And they also open the Olive Grove at uh, breakfast and lunchtime if there's any need to sit in there, mm -hmm. because sometimes it is a little bit busier. 
for evening meals too, there's, there's lots of different venues on board, which is what makes the freedom concept work so well because the guests are spread out everywhere, I suppose. We've tried on board Iona the Beach House, Keelan Cow, Sindhu, Glass House, Olive Grove. <laughs> so pretty much everywhere. Um, and we've enjoyed them all. We are going to talk about them in a bit more detail in another video. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. Another one of our favourite venues on board Iona is Limelight. We've actually been there twice and we've seen two different acts in there. We mm -hmm. saw Lavoie and if you've seen her, you'll know how amazing she is. And we saw Jamie Hensley, who was in Union J, if you're not sure. The experience in Limelight is always yeah quite special, quite magical almost, because mm -hmm. it just feels so intimate. The food is very special. Yeah, it's worth it for the food, even if you're not keen on the act. And the entertainment is always a step above the rest of the entertainment on board. Entertainment-wise on board, again, there's, there's just lots of choice. Because um, Iona has the Sky Dome venue as well as the theatre, you, you get multiple options on the evening. And something to be aware of is that the shows will be repeated. So don't panic if you can't fit everything in on one night. They'll do the theatre show twice and the Sky Dome yeah. show twice. Unless there's technical issues. We've had, <laughs> we've had a few technical issues with Sky yeah. Dome shows. Mm -hmm. um, Sky Dome is a great asset to the ship because it, it brings those aerial shows, things that you've never seen before on board p &O ships. Mm -hmm. So only now really on Arvia and yeah. Iona. And Sky Dome also has other acts on board. We loved yeah. the... Um, the light, the laser show. Oh um, yeah, James. the Alex James one. That yeah. one's actually really good. And you also will see, um, we've seen some singers in there. We saw that Dolly Parton yeah. tribute. We saw um, the girl band, she. she. And we've, we've always had a good time. You do sometimes see people complain about sound quality in, in the Sky Dome, which I suppose has never really been an issue for us. We're, suppose, we're probably not sound quality connoisseurs, but... If that is something that concerns you, then maybe stick to the theatre and the clubhouse for your musical offerings. Within the theatre, you get the same type of shows as you get on board mm. other P&O ships. Apart from you can now see Greatest Day, yeah. which obviously we've not seen, it's not been on <laughs> that recent. Um, you've got your usual headliners type of shows, and then mm. you have your guest entertainer too. And then, just like other P&O ships, there's lots going on around the ship. You'll have a busker. Mm -hmm. who might be in Brodie's, you could have um, comedians yeah, in who the in the clubhouse. Pulse will be on in various locations, yeah. again, probably in the clubhouse. And there is also 710, which is another great addition. It's curated by Gary Barlow, so the, the Take That theme is strong on the ship. And um, there essentially is a house band in there that play um, a selection of songs that fit around a theme. So it's a different theme each night. Mm -hmm. You can book now yes. to go in. When we were on, you couldn't. You just had to queue. Um, bit of a tip, the late show is yeah, so the easiest one to get into. 12.15. 12 mm -hmm. So we did finish a few nights in there. because yeah. it's, it's a really small venue. And it's interesting on a ship of the size of Iona yeah. to be in a smaller venue like that. But it's, it's a lovely venue and it has a great atmosphere. Our favourite venue on board. Iona is probably no surprise to most people, <laughs> um, but it's the clubhouse. We always like the late night bar, yeah. But we feel like the clubhouse is really being set up for the purpose. Yeah, it's a really nice room. the 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 fit is yeah. is lovely. Like the interior design in there is great. It's bigger, obviously, mm. because it's a bigger ship than many other places. Um, many of those other venues on board other ships. And it was often quite busy when yeah. we've been on board. We've had great DJs in there, seen mm -hmm. late night comedy in there, Pulse yeah. in there. Other acts actually we've seen in we there have. as well. And we've seen some very full dance floors in there. So it's always been a really great venue to finish off the night. Mm -hmm. We have been known to go in there, come back, go in there, come <laughs> back. One of the big pluses about it is the staff in there. Mm -hmm. So other late night venues we've experienced on other ships can have very few staff. Mm -hmm. However, there were always loads and loads of staff who normally know our drink order by about the second <laughs> day and they will serve us quite readily. Yeah. 
they don't want to see you approaching the bar. If you no. go near it, they're like, no, go sit down, I'll come over to you. So, yeah, we've only ever experienced good service in there and just really helpful staff. Iona and Arvia only have one celebration night per seven night cruise, which is different to the rest of the fleet. It's well it's been well observed on every every Iona cruise we've been on. I think people tend to really enjoy that that dressing up aspect. Yeah. We always love getting our formal dresses yeah. out because when else do you get to dress like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things that they do on Iona and Arvia to try and ease the pressure on the main dining room is chef's table, which... Yeah, so, on the other ships, on celebration, slash formal night, Beef Wellington is served in the main dining room. Yeah. However, on board Iona, and I'm presuming Arvia, mm. it is not. So, therefore, you have to book chef's table. Mm -hmm. Chef's table is essentially an area of the buffet, that you're sat in and it is just so that the main dining room isn't too busy because everybody would obviously want to eat in the main dining room on celebration night so it spreads the crowd out a little bit it's it was a little bit disappointing for us the last time we did this because we were basically sat on an aisle we personally don't feel it works because mm -hmm. chef's table to me sounds like it should be a step above the the dining room yeah. and it's not you're sat in the buffet we were sat right by the aisle there were people just walking through in, not in their formal clothes, yeah. which you ex expect in the buffet, but they didn't sort of close that area off. I do think they have taken some feedback on this, and perhaps that has changed a little bit now, but wasn't it, it wasn't great in our experience. So we, at the time, said we probably wouldn't book it again because mm. I can get with beef well into another shift. Yeah. <laughs> We love Iona and we will happily sail on Iona time and time again. We are always very jealous when we're looking at other people on board. So if you're on board, have a fantastic time if you're going soon. We will probably go on board next year because yeah, we're hoping to. we will book a Fjords cruise yeah. with our parents who are desperate to give it a go. And if you've got any questions or anything you want us to cover really on Iona or any other p and ships, please do ask them in the comments below and we'll do our best to try and do that for you. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, TikTok and Facebook. You'll find us by searching at Sisters on the Seas.